to our dear man of God, Pastor Prosper, for the opportunity to take the opening prayer session. The word of God says, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. And in first Peter in first Thessalonians chapter eight one chapter five verse eighteen, it says, It is the will of God consigning us that we should give thanks. Let's go ahead and thank the Lord for today's service. Said Abraham Parakredi Gede Yushalamani. And the Rogran Anta Kat Gili Bram does Liga Ditas Naradans as teachers this. Zeneta Kram the Graliki Bonjaraman, the Hira Hastra de Gronin the Histers. Zeneta Bram Proliman, the Graliki Bonjaraman, the Glido Jalaman, the Gradita. Gruban and Kobedi Gibbons, the Libra Opradina Ajaraman, the Stegroskit. In Ajaraman, the Stegroskila Ajaraman, the Gridi Gibbon, the Hira Hastes, the Gridi Gosha. And on Gridi Gibbons, the Latons, the Stage of Secret of Ajaraman, the Gridi Ganeda, the Rabra Manta Glide Gibbons, the Rata Hastes. In all Jeremiah, to pray to God, but to pray in a clear voice, to pray in a clear voice. In all God, to pray, 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 to the word of God says in Matthew chapter 16 and in verse 18, He says, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Pray for the churches that are meeting in every city and country. Declare that whatever Satan proposes to do about this situation is turned upside down. The expectation of the wicked is turned upside down. Declare that every church of Christ is a place of blessing in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. No evil that is planned will prosper. As we meet, God will bless. If any sick comes into our midst, that person shall be healed. For the presence of the Lord is with us. Zenaton God gile et le dijus. Le grona po ampra diga et la po ampra hira ha grena monta le po ampra dira ha le gas gidi. Zenaton da stage si grena monta ligra at le grena monta la po ampra le briatli. Ilo ampra le monta la grena ke monstre at le gla gidi ke po ampra le monta. Ilo ampra le monta ampra le monta le gra ampra le ampra ira grena ampra ira at le na asta le on da stage sa ta. Kere te kons kile monza vrediga at le grena anda te ada tira kons kos gile. The expectation of the wicked is turned upside down, and we declare that the church of Christ uh, is a place of blessing in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. And if there is anyone that is sick that comes in our midst, uh, the person receives his healing. Ah, uh. in cross kile eshala ma pre ira atla glero shala ma la kide katira hati. In on krola ma prali bande lando dida atla re katira astre desh ira ashala ma ne prade ke bon sata. In on shala ma prali bande. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and thank the Lord for today's service. In on shala ma pre ira atla re ma pre data kile ma prali bande stages is from glory to. Glory will not go back on the same in the name of the Lord Jesus as we behold through the ministration of the word and of the spirit. Our lives will be transformed, that will be upgraded, would have made progress, would have advanced in the name of the Lord Jesus. I go ahead and thank the Lord. In a ugly clero, settle on the stage as a taha. In a sharamanta, gradi clero, relevant, relevant, at least on selete, braskira, astrades, the higher. In a Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Just lift up your hands and worship Jesus. Oh, give him all the glory. Give him all the honor.
Our text scripture is taken from the book of Colossians chapter 3 and in verse 5. The word of God says, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil conspicuousness, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Pastor says the spirit construction through the Apostle Paul of the verse above is rather interesting. First, it shows that you are not an earthly being. The only members or part of your personality that's earthly is your physical body. That's your instrument for functioning in the earth. You are essentially a spirit being. Therefore, you can control your body. Hallelujah. Observe the word mortify in our opening verse. It's the Greek word necreo, where the English derived necrosis. Necrosis is the death of body tissues resulting from an interruption of blood flow to that tissue. For example, if there is a problem with the supply of blood to the limb, that tissue dies. When this is this, what then is the spirit telling us here? It means you are cut. You are to cut off the supply, the very thing that feeds the evil and unwholesome desire luring in your members sexual vices, impurity, sensual appetites, greed, covetousness. Mortify or subject them to death by the interruption of its supply. Deadened and deprive them of their power to control your life. It's your responsibility to do this. If there is inappropriate habits you like to stop or some of the instructions the scripture expressly condemn for a Christian that you will likely to completely obliterate from your life. Simply do what the Bible says. Cut the supply from your thought system. Don't feed them with your thoughts. It might be a video, a book, a website or some TV programs refuse to allow them influence you any further. If you stop feeding your flesh, the wrong desires won't have a place in your life. You did find that your behavior will change. Christianity must be practiced. The Bible says, the Bible tells us what to feed our minds with. In Philippians chapter 4 and in verse 8, it says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think of these things. So consciously take your mind off on worldful thoughts, or wholesome thoughts, and set your affection on Christ, his word, his love, his goodness, and mercies and grace. Hallelujah. Let's take our confessions together. Say after me. By the power of the Spirit, I mortify, I do, worthless and unproductive thoughts. I use my mind correctly to picture the glorious and victorious life I have been called to live in Christ. Amen. Lift your hands wherever you are in your home, wherever you are watching now. Lift your hands, everyone. Just begin to worship and praise Him. 
thank him for his goodness in your life. Thank him for his love, his supply, his provisions, his protection. Thank you for all that God has been to you. Nengroto skatala brota shaka labra. Vokilado shaka tala trenomos. Ito vlegedi shala protis kalatrontis kaba. Lefrotis kalatrons get flikrantas kalatrons kedepra. Mongratus kalatrons kedebranta sukilantro shala tranka shaltaska. Skalatrantas kalatasa krapatu shala baha. Oh, we worship and we praise your name, O God. Thank you, Father. We love you. We worship you. For you are great and mighty God. And greatly to be praised. You are worthy of all our praises. We love you, O oh God. We bow heart to you in worship. We acknowledge and we declare that you are our King. Our Lord, our Maker. We love you, O oh God. Lord, we thank for the ministry of your, words in our, of your word in our life. Lord, we thank you because of the transforming power of the word of God in our lives. And we are open to you this morning again, O oh Lord, to be catapulted, to be transformed, to be energized, to be guided and be instructed through your word. Lord, we thank you for the ministry of your spirit, O oh God. That as the word comes to our spirit, it will come with the understanding in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And our lives will never remain the same again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Good morning to you. How are you? And how was your night? I'm sure you are enjoying yourself. Don't allow anything to bother you. Just enjoy your life. Enjoy it. May say, ah, Pastor, in this circumstance, how can somebody enjoy your life? It's a choice. You don't need to feel like it. You don't need to feel happy or joyful. Just set your mind that you are going to be happy. No matter what. Hallelujah. So enjoy your life. Whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever the money in your pocket, just enjoy yourself. Don't look at your circumstance. Look at God. Hallelujah. Who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Praise God. This morning... I'm going to be sharing on a very important topic, which is going to be like a continuation of what I shared with you last Sunday. I have put the title as The Origin, The Life, and The Future of the Man Without Christ. Talking about the origin, the life, and the future of the man that is without Christ. And when we are talking about the man without Christ, we are talking about the present man. The present man who is not a Christian. The human being. The people that are not born again. The, their state, their, their origin. The life and the future. Praise the Lord. That's their future. I, I would like to start by talking about the man that God created. I would like to start by reading from Genesis chapter 1. These are scriptures that many of us are familiar with. But a man of God has always told us that we should not allow the word of God to become too common to us. That you know everything. There's always something new from the word of God. I'm sure you'll see some new things as we go ahead, go on this morning. Reading from Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26. The Bible says, And God said, Let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea. And over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created it in male and female created it then. And God blessed them. And God 
said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to point out one or two phrases there. The first one is in verse 26. It says, And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowls of the air, of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth. He's saying to man that let us make man that will have dominion over all the earth. He's talking about somebody that is going to rule this earth. That's what it means. So we want to make someone that will rule this earth. And look at something again in verse 28. The last sentence there says, And over the fowls of the air, and over every living thing that moved upon the earth. You can see that the man that God created was the king of the earth. Adam was the king of the earth. The ruler of the earth. The one that has the final say. This was the man that God created. The man that has dominion over all of God's creatures. Everything that God made, all of his creatures, God and then everything. In, verse, in fact, in the next chapter, in uh, I think in verse 19, the Bible says God brought all the animals. God brought all the animals to Adam to give them names. And whatever name Adam gave them, that became their name. Hallelujah. That means God brought lion. He brought elephants. He brought all different species of animals. And Adam began to name them. That is when you name something, it means that you are exercising authority over the thing. So man was the king of the earth. This is the man that God made. Man was the king of the earth. He was to reign. He was to reign. This is the one that God made. Remember, the Bible says every good and perfect gift come from God. So if this man came from God, it means that he must be very good and must be excellent and perfect. Glory to God. So this man that God made, this man, God made the man to be like him and function like him. So Adam looked like God. Adam was to function like God. That means he's supposed to be the God, the way God is the God of the universe. Adam was made to be the God of the earth. Hallelujah. And this is what God did. This is the work of his hand. Adam, this is the Adam that God made. But you know what happened? This man, Adam, that God made, something happened to him. You know what? You all know what happened to him. He died. He died. This king of the earth died. The ruler of the earth died. What happened to him? You all know the story. How he became slave of sin. Before now, Adam was in charge of animals. Adam can say, Lion, come here, and Lion will come. He can say, Elephant, come and carry me. I'm going somewhere. But the Bible let us know. That all this thing change suddenly. Even look at what is happening now. You see, lion attack a particular community, killing people. Men are afraid of animals. You hear that this animal sorry, this, this has happened to this person. People run away from animals. Animals have become dangerous to mankind. But man was supposed to subdue this God. Man gave these animals name. But because of the fall, the man that was so high suddenly became the man so low because of the fall. It was really a fall indeed. 
You know, Bible says, for all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. Man fell from the glory of God. He was highly rated. But he fell. Glory to God. This man died. You know, God already told him. If, let's go into Genesis chapter. Go to Genesis chapter 2. From verse 7, 9. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nursery the breath of life. And the man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward of, e of Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant. Can you see? Every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Let me pause here. God, before God created man, he planted a garden. And in the garden, there are trees, pleasant, beautiful trees. And the Bible said they are good for food. They are good for food. And God planted, mentioned two specific trees. It mentioned the tree of the knowledge of good and the tree of life hallelujah glory to God and let's jump to verse 16 and the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it for in the day that thou eateth of there uh, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Look at the picture. God took Adam around. He showed him all the trees. Everything. He saw all these trees. They are beautiful. They are good for food. He showed him that this is the tree of life. This is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Then he said to him, of all the trees that are up here, all the things you have here you are free to eat all of them all of them just in my different species of fruit different kind of trees good for food many of them he said you are free to eat he said but one of them don't touch it and that is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil he said this particular one don't touch it that means you can even eat the tree of life. Everything. Just enjoy yourself. But just leave this one for me. Glory to God. What had, It was a definite and clear instruction. But you know what happened? Man couldn't take it. Man fell. And God told him that if you eat of this, you are going to die. And devil came tempting man. And of course you know what happened? Man yielded to Satan. And man eat of that fruit. Disobeyed God. Ate of that fruit. And man changed. God said if you eat it you will die. I know God does not lie. He cannot lie. So if man eat it. Man has to die. You know man ate it. And man. The man that God did. The man that God created. Not the man that God formed. God formed the body of the man. But he created the spirit of the man. All the blessings are in the spirit of the man. So the one that died is not the man that God formed. It was the man that God created. It was clear of sin. The body was still there. He's still looking like Adam. But inside, the real Adam has changed. Adam died before God. And everyone that came to this world through the agency of a man died. That means from that moment man became disconnected. God could fellowship, could not fellowship with man again because man is now dead to him. Man is not dead to God. 
Man is living somewhere, but he's dead to God. There's something I still want to point out to you here. You know, Satan, you know, Pastor will always, will always tell us that Satan does his stuff. He does his stuff. You just have to stop him. You may think that that's the final thing that the devil plan to do for man is to make him fall. No. The devil has a second agenda. And that is to make man eat the fruit of life. And you know, once man eats it, man becomes irredeemable like Satan. Satan is not redeemable. Because once man eat that fruit, it means that man cannot die again. It becomes lost forever. Lost forever. This way, what that's what this is what devil is going to. He wants more disciples. He wants people to look exactly like him. To face the same thing he's going to face. So Satan plan for man wasn't just to make man fall, but to make man irredeemable. No remedy. He will not stop. They want to make from bad to worse, from worse to worse. He doesn't even get to the end of worse. Worse, bad to worse. And they keep getting worse. That's the way devil operates. Glory to God. But thank God. Thank God. There is this love that God still has for man. God cannot just allow the work of his hand to go like that. And God quickly came in and intervened. And God said, Adam, Adam, where are you? God had to come in. And God, you know what happened after that? He, faced, he asked the man, why have you done this? The man says, the woman. Woman, why have you done this? The woman says, snake. Snake, who are you? Snake will not talk because there is nobody to direct himself to. Glory to God. So, but one thing I want you to know is that God had to drive man from that Eden. He said so that they will not eat of the tree of life. Because the tree of life is there. Man has not eaten it. Thank God they have not eaten it. So God had to stop them. Because if they are eating it, they have become irredeemable. But God was smarter than Satan. Glory to God. But you know what? Something has already gone wrong. Man was already dead. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, let's look at the nature of this man. What man has become? What man has become? What has man become? The man that is so glorious now has fallen from glory. What has he become? Let's, let's look at Ephesians chapter 1. Chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2. Let me read it from the NIV so that you may be able to pick it faster. Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 1. Ephesians chapter 2. I hope you have your Bible with you there. Put your Bible to Ephesians chapter 2. From verse 1. I'm going to read from the NIV. Now, Paul was writing to Christians, trying to let them know where they are coming from. And where they were coming from is where sinners are now. So he's trying to explain to us, open our eyes to the understanding, to clarify, I mean, unveil to us the state of things there. You may not know it. The man may not know that these are bad things are with them until their eyes are open to it. And this is what the scripture did for us here. Verse 1 says, And you are the quicken who were dead in trespasses and sin. Let me take it from the NIV now. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you follow the way of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the earth the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient hallelujah it says you used to be like this 
You used to follow the course of this world, the way of this world. You used to be a slave of Satan who rules the earth now because man, by submitting to Satan, has hand over this earth to Satan. Glory to God. And it says, the spirit who is now at work, that devil, that evil spirit, that is now working in the life of disobedience, which is to let us know that for everyone that is in darkness, for everyone that is not born again, there is a spirit that is at work in them, according to the scripture. And the Bible says, the spirit, Bible calls it the spirit of darkness. Hallelujah. The spirit of darkness. That's the spirit of devil. The devil is the one influencing their life. That means they are under the influence of the spirit. That is the devil. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because that's where we were before. And everyone there, they are still under the influence of Satan. Glory to God. And they are children of disobedience. Verse 3. All of us also live among them at one time gratifying the craving of our flesh and following the desires and our thoughts like the rest we were by nature deserving wrath. let me take verse 2 and 3 in the King James Version where in time past you walk according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit that walketh in the children of disobedience among whom also we all had our conversation our manner of life in time past in the loss of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of rocks even as others by nature the children of us rocks that means you don't need to provoke God you don't need to do something to make God angry by nature you are already provoking God just like some people who don't like some things naturally. There are some people who don't like cats, for example. There are some people who don't like dogs, for example. A dog or a cat does not need to do anything to you before you eat or you dislike the cry. But just that naturally, you don't just like this animal. So the same way, that's the way the sinners are by nature. By nature. They have become separated from God by nature, the children of wrath. And because by the virtue of their nature, they have no option but to face the wrath of God. Not because of what they did, but because of the nature they have. Say so by who uh, by nature. Let me take it again. And were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. You can see what this man has become. The one that got so much love suddenly has become the one that in nature is to face the wrath of God. By nature. Hallelujah. It's terrible. Terrible. Isn't it? It's terrible. Brothers and sisters, the human beings, this may be hard to take but you must know. You know, everybody may claim that uh, we are all created by God. Every human being say we are God. God created us. Listen to me. I told you last week that there is difference between the formation of man and the creation of man. If you say we are the one formed by God, we may be justified. But everyone that is not born again cannot say I am God's creature. Because the Adam that God created died. The Adam that God created died. So it would be wrong for you to say, I am God's creature. The one God created had died. So what you can say, if you want to say anything, say, I am the one that God formed. Because you see, I have the body that he formed. Tell you the truth. That's the truth. The man that we have now is not the one that God created. The man that we have now has taken a new nature, which is evil, which is of the devil. Hallelujah. And that takes me to the next one. Next point. Which is the future. 
No, we're talking about the origin. We're talking about their life, their present state. Now we're talking about their future. We just read that they were by nature the children of wrath. That means as far as they are concerned, as long as this nature is in them, this is their end. The destination of that nature. That nature has an end, has a destination. And that destination is the lake of fire. Because of that nature. The nature. The destination of that nature is the lake of fire. So everyone that carries that nature has become a candidate of of lake of fire. Not the candidate of hell. Of hell because hell is a waiting place. Even though it's a place of torment, it's a place of punishment, it's a house of Satan. That's where the Satan is. That's where his home is. But the lake of fire is the final destination of Satan. So if anybody dies now, he's going to hell. But that's not the destination. It's a waiting place. Glory to God. Just like heaven is also a waiting place. So the end of this nature, the end of everyone that carries this nature, is the lake of fire. Brothers and sisters, some of our friends are still carrying this nature. Some of our siblings are still carrying this nature. Some of us are parents. They are still carrying this nature. Some of us are children. are still carrying this nature. Some of us are boss in the office. They are carrying this nature. Some of us are classmates. Our teachers, our lecturers, our loved ones, people that we love. Many of them are carrying this nature. The nature that has the destination in lake of fire. What are we going to do about it? Are you going to open your eyes and fold your hands and allow your loved ones to carry on with this nature and end up in the lake of fire? Are you going to allow that? I know you won't. I know you won't. Are you going to do something about it? And you know what? Jesus had done something about it. You know, devil cannot always, devil can never win when it comes to God. God will always as mass Satan. Glory to God. God had to plan for the redemption of man. Jesus had to come, pay the penalty. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The penalty, the penalty to redeem man because God doesn't want me, because according to this nature everyone that comes to this world is supposed to go to the lake of fire but God wouldn't want that for man so Jesus Christ came in as a substitute and pay the penalty where Adam missed it Jesus succeeded hallelujah where he failed where he fell Jesus was victorious hallelujah hallelujah and guess what? Guess what? Jesus gave to us not just what Adam lost. Jesus gave to us something far higher than what Adam lost. Jesus gave to us a new life. Jesus gave to us a life far higher than the one that Adam had before he fell. So, when we talk about who a Christian is, a Christian or Christian is not a restoration of the life that Adam lost in the garden. No, it is far higher. Glory to God. Christianity is the life of God in the human body. A Christian is a new creature according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. The Bible says therefore if any man be in Christ he is a new creature. All things are passed away. All things are passed away. All things are passed away. Behold all things are become new. So if any man be in Christ he's a new creature. You know in Genesis chapter 1 the Bible let us know about all the things that God created. Everything that God created. And the Bible said to us that 
uh, the last thing God created was man. And on the Sabbath day, that's the seventh day, the Bible said God rested. But the Bible let us know in this second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, God had to do another creation. There was another creation that God that was not there. A new species of being. A new kind of being that never existed before. And that is what a Christian is. A new species. A human being bought the life of God. Satan was succeeded, was successful, as su uh, succeeded in turning man to himself. But God came and introduced a life that is higher. And man has a choice to make in John 3:16. The Bible says, For God so loved the world. Let's go there. Let me read something to you there. John 3:16. Hallelujah. Ask the person still beside you. Say, Hope you are following Pastor. Hope you are enjoying yourself. Hope you are getting the message. Alright. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Can you see? Say for those who are not born again, say they are already condemned. There's a sentence of death. There's a sentence. They are already judged. They are already judged. So the way out of judgment is to accept Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Glory to God. The life that man has now, which is his life in quotes, is supposed to lead them to lake of fire. But God is giving them option. He's saying to them, come to me. Come to me. Whosoever believes, come and believe. Believe. Hallelujah. Believe that Jesus died for you. That his death on the cross is for you. You've got to believe. You've got to yield to that call. Bible says, for whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That is the only prayer that God listens to when it comes to unbelievers. The prayer of unbelievers are abomination to God. The only one that God hears, the only one that God responds to is the one, is the call for salvation. Because he gave them that provision. So for everyone who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So when you call upon him, he will receive, he will receive you into his kingdom. Hallelujah. So whosoever believes in him should not perish. That's the way out. That's the way out of destruction. But have what? Eternal life. In other words, have a life of God. He's giving them an offer that take. Get born again. Believe in me. If you believe in me, you will not perish. If you don't, you will be perish. But if you believe, you will not perish. Apart from not just being perished. To say, to, to tell someone that no, you will not perish is a good news. But there is something higher. So he said to them, so that you will not be perished, but have what? A life that is a supreme life. The life of God. Zoe. The kind of life, the same life that God has. He said that's what you are going to receive. And that means you will be born again. That nature that's supposed to take you to lake of fire will be destroyed. We become dead and you have a new life now you come alive to god glory to god adam died but now you come alive to god glory to god now you are alive to him you have come into his world Bible said god who had delivered us from the kingdom of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son we are now in his kingdom we have been born into light glory to god hallelujah so when you get born again, you are welcome to the kingdom of light. You are alive to God. You have come to the realm of the living before God. Glory to God. A new creature is a God man. Look at what God did for man, for a new creature. From the far worst 
to the far, from the far worst to his very best. The best God could do for man is to make man to be exactly like him. Not just to be him. Because what makes God, God is his nature. And that is the nature that he gave us. The one that he created in, in, uh, in Genesis was like him. But the new creature was him. I mean, is him. Because we have become a partaker of the Godhead. Bible said God has made God the partaker of his divine nature. Which means that if you say God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the next God is to be God you. Hallelujah. Because the same life that flows. You can see, we are partakers of the same nature. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, then God you. Hallelujah. So, thank God that you are born again. And if you are not born again, you already know what you carry inside. And you know what? It's something you can drop. It's something you can drop. You can let go that nature. It's your choice. Jesus Christ offered it. He said, whosoever. He said, for God so loved the world. For God so loved you. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, anyone that believes on him should not perish but have everlasting. Your choice is just one. To believe. That's the only way out. The Bible says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. The only way out is to respond this way. Is to get born again. Believe with all of your heart that Christ died for you. If you are ready to give your heart to Christ, say this prayer after me. Close your eyes if you want to give your heart to Christ. And put your right hand on your chest, wherever you are watching me from. And say this prayer out loud after me. Say, dear Father, I thank you for the love you have for me. I made Jesus Christ died on my behalf on the cross. I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe that he rose again on the third day for my justification. I confess him now as my Lord and my Savior. I have the life of God in me now. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things are passing away and all things are become new. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for these ones who just give their heart to you. I pray that by your spirit you will strengthen them. You will keep them in your word. And you call the hunger for your word to be stronger than ever in their lives in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That they will grow speedily in the things of the spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. For every one of you that have been watching me, I believe you have received the word of God. For those of us that are born again, make sure you preach the gospel. This gospel must be preached. Knowing the future of man, we have to preach to rescue them from the wrath of God. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you. Keep preaching the gospel. Don't be silent. Don't relate your efforts. And I want to encourage you. Make sure that you always participate in the uh, Love World program. On, uh, on your love world, on our, all, our, all our love world networks. Make sure you participate by 7 p.m. Make sure you are, you, are, you are online or you are watching on all our love world networks. Because there's so much that is happening in the world. And I, I, God has raised a man of God to stand in the gap. And pastor has, God has used pastor to save mankind from a lot. So we are joining force with him in prayers and so many other things. So don't miss today's broadcast by 7 p.m. And also, you know, we are fasting and praying for every members. You know, pastor said ministers, pastors are the one pre- fasting with him. Glory to God. But I now said that the brethren in church, uh, Christ Mercy Agbo group, should have their fasting and praying, and which we have started since last week. And we are on. We'll continue. We are continuing today and tomorrow. And on Tuesday will be the last day. You know, I've been sending prayer points to you. Make sure that you follow those prayer points. Keep to the time you choose for your prayer. And make sure you pray with your family. One of the blessing of, blessings of this lockdown is that 
that has brought church ministry that has brought angels the power of the spirit the blessed of god into many families now and it will not leave glory to god enjoy your week i bless you that this week will be a fruitful week for you none of you shall be a victim of circumstance and everything you set your hands on to do will prosper and god will meet you at the point of your needs in the name of our lord jesus christ none of your steps shall slide the one that keeps israel does not slumber god is your keeper in the name of our lord jesus christ he's your shepherd he will provide for your need he will guide you in the name of our lord jesus christ you are blessed in jesus name we pray amen i hope to see you very very soon god has fixed the time i know very soon we'll be back in church again just keep praying and keep trusting god i love you very very much i miss you a great deal and be blessed thank you